Hey everyone, Rob's here, and I have another book I want to look at today. This is uh, just simply Mark Silvestri's sketchbook. This is something that he put out in 2004. Yes, 2004. Um, this is the kind of thing that I always personally get very interested in, seeing um, the, the sketchy work. I mean, you always see the full colored artwork like you see here, but I like to see, especially the artists that I love, their pencil line work or the rough stuff, things like that. So seeing the sketchbook from Mark Silvestri was really exciting. And um, I've been digging through my uh, piles of comics that I've been collecting for years and years and years. The weather has finally uh, warmed up and snow has melted, so I was able to go dig digging through my storage shed, through my 12 long boxes of comics, and I didn't get through them very far before I had a big pile of stuff I wanted to talk about. Some absolutely def definitely want to talk about, some stuff, and yeah, we'll see how I feel. But this is one that's kind of right in the middle, because as I've kind of flipped through it, just to kind of refresh my memory on it, because I haven't seen this in a long time, there is some good stuff in here, but some of it's a little bit less interesting. Uh, there's a lot more I think they could have done with this. Rather than trying to like make it look so designy and putting text and stuff, just fill it with pages of your artwork, dude. That's all I want to see. But it's interesting enough. Um, one of my favorite things, probably the best thing about this, is this drawing of Witchblade on the cover. There is something about the way Silvestri does his work, that face, and then this kind of organic technological stuff. That's the Witchblade character. Um, as an artist, this foot, this angle on it to have, you see the top of it and the bottom of it and this high heel kind of design and the way this technological stuff just kind of melds into the background stuff. That's something about the way the character was originally designed I always liked was this, this organic weapon of hers that just starts as a glove, just kind of forms around her. And it's more organic than technological in a way, even though it's like a metal kind of technology. Whatever, maybe I'll get into a Witchblade book at some time. But I thought that drawing is one of my favorite drawings he's ever done. Let's flip this guy open. Um, he says in here, this is something that I thought was, that I can agree with here. Um... He says here, all I know is whenever I crack open a sketchbook, people want to see it. And I know when I meet other artists, I want to see what's crawling through their brains. I want to see their sketchbook, their means to the end. There are no portraits of my dogs, my family, or the trees in the backyard to be found here. These are all thoughts and ideas for what I do. Comics. And I like that. Like, we all fill up sketchbooks full of stuff if we're an artist. But he's like, this is my comic stuff. So I agree with him on that. Um, it's a neat little pencil drawing down here. That's pretty cool. Again, I think they kind of overdone it with the designy stuff. That's probably more effort than they needed to put into it. Just fill it with your drawings, buddy. Uh, these are some older sketches of his original Cyberforce characters in their original form. He talks about them a little bit. Um, Cyberforce, that's something I probably want to look at sometime. It started out really interesting, but the original four issue miniseries, like most of the Image Guys first miniseries, um, it, it didn't really go anywhere. It, it didn't feel, it, every, setup is easy. Issue one is easy. Getting the, introducing everyone is relatively easy, but having a story pay off in the end, it, you can feel like, especially I feel in this one, by the end of um, issue four, it's like all too many ideas and no idea how to really wrap them up, so it just kind of ended. That's fine. This character's neat with the three arms on one side. That's really cool. Um, he didn't really end up drawing this character, Ripclaw, with his because he has bladed fingers, but there are these really jagged things. And I think he's saying here in the text that he recognizes that this guy wouldn't be able to function in the world if that's what they always look like. So they ended up being like liquid metal hands, like on the Terminator 2, so they could be regular and then form into solid metal shapes, which they could still do that. But that's a pretty awesome drawing right there. I'm into that. Um, and again, these are just sketches, but sometimes the quick, frantic, raw nature of the line work is more interesting than the finished stuff in some cases. I think these are great figures, great poses, interesting designs. They're very 90s image comics era stuff. Um, sketches for a book. I, I remember picking this up. Evo, I guess is how it said, EVO. He did an issue or two or something like that of these interesting-ish characters. I, it's just kind of 
fizzled out and went nowhere and was canceled. And another, he's had a couple of books just kind of ended and went nowhere. And it's like, well, what happened? What was the point of starting it if you're not going to follow through on it? These guys have that problem often. Um, I guess these were storyboards for a proposal for a Cyberforce animated series that was being thought about for a minute. Part of me wishes that we could have seen it, but there, as far as the image comic books, there was a Wildcat animated series that was just horrible. And there was a Savage Dragon that was terrible in as much as it was not anything like the comic. It was just ridiculous. It's like, if you can't do it the way the book is originally intended, why are we even doing it? But they want to do these things for for kids to appeal to the largest audience to get the biggest kind of viewership and ad revenue and that type of stuff. They don't want to do something adult. At the time, especially, they wouldn't do that because they figured it was not going to make its money back. So these don't do it. Um, these were sketches of uh, the Witchblade character where it was for a, a statue. And they do this a lot where they'll have the artist sketch it out and do a front, a back, a side, and give, give little notes for the sculptors to adhere to on what to make the uh, statue look like. So that's interesting. I mean, it's, it's a much quicker drawing. There's not much to it. And it's a little anatomically not exactly right, but it's, it's all right. Um, another comic he started and didn't finish, I think there were legal troubles with the movie studio or something like this, uh, Inferno. Um, I love these little figures and this, it was about like a team of like soldiers that go to hell like a mission to hell to retrieve someone. So there's all this hellish landscape imagery. And the thing with Sylvester I've mentioned before is that he's got a very organic style. I say organic style knowing exactly what it means. When somebody said that to me, I'm like, right, that's exactly, that's exactly what his artwork is. But if you were asking me to explain what I mean by that, I don't know if I can actually adequately verbalize that. But it's not straight and angular. It's very... Um, imaginative and these very organic shapes, these twisting, moving things. Look at this guy's wild design and all this clothing and the horns. Organic. That's just the, the only thing I can come up to describe his artwork, and it's, it's great. These are some more of the characters for the Inferno, uh, bad guys for the Evo comic. You think they put the Evo things together? Whatever. Um, that's Soldier Girls packing some cannons good lord um did i skip a page i don't think i did maybe i did i did not um i think this is a great drawing although i don't know why the darkness is shown multiple times i don't know what the story is going on here but that's a really good figure i mean if i assume if you're watching this you know comics you know sylvester you kind of get the nature of uh, a certain style of comics where they're very sexualized, especially the female figures. Um, you could call it unnecessary, whatever. That's a whole argument, but he does it really well. I love this figure, the girl, and those big old wings and these monsters. Just looks great. Um, this is a great drawing. I love that right there. That's the like, character. That's the darkness. But his human anatomy the muscles and the twisting of it and everything. And that looks so great. And this angelic girl on top of them. It's cute. It's fun. It's dynamic. It's just beautiful. Um, this is that same character from like the first page with the three arms on one side. But he's trying to like streamline it and get it less overdone with belts and gear and guns and straps and just streamline it. And um, a lot less interesting. Uh, another character from another book. He didn't actually end up drawing this book, but he was doing design sketches. And what's kind of unfortunate, his designs for these characters look great with his artwork. But I think in the back of this, I believe, yeah, there's some black and white pages of this book. And these characters look so much less interesting in the hands of an, at the time, significantly less talented and interesting artist. So these look great. I like her face. This This face is great. The eyes, the mouth. The little pigtails. Um, this face I always thought was one of the best faces he's ever done. I can't tell you why. Um, it's just the proportions of it and the look. It's the way he does like the nose and the mouth. It's like broken line and suggestion. I heard another artist refer to Sylvester's artwork as that, and that's exactly what it is. Broken line and suggestion. It, just great. Um, this thick little weird monster guy. That's interesting. For that comic where the soldiers go to hell, he's doing some like hell vehicles. A hell train? Like, 
a train in hell with all this, again, that crazy organic, it's like a machine, but also made of or covered in like bones and bug-like exoskeletal features. I'd, I would never be able to come up with something like that. I just don't get it. He's got a great imagination. Uh, he did a X-Men run with uh, Grant Morrison, and these are some working out some designs for that book. Um, that was a really good one. That was some great artwork in that. I've been looking at that several times recently. I might have to pull that one out, but good designs. Oh, this is fantastic. I hope that the resolution shows up well enough. Um, at a glance, this is just like, like a CD bar. But if you start looking at it, it's like a magical bar. Like there's a bottle here, no one's holding it. It's, it's levitating itself pouring a drink these seats just float in the air like this guy back here is floating or rather sitting on a floating chair these guys right through here um if you can't tell they are playing cards but the cards are just floating in the air like they're i think it's a magic inspired setting so they're having their cards float in the air really neat um this stud right here, this girl's got a cigarette and he's like snapping his fingers and it's creating some flame to light her cigarette. His cup's floating, her cup's floating. There's like a little table here floating in the air. And this guy, he's like getting his pool cue ready, but the pool balls are just floating around. So I guess in a way, magic means things just float. But the perspective on everything, this shiny countertop, I think as an artist, I'm looking at this, like his rendering on that to give it like a shiny like the countertop of it has a really clean, slick looking surface. I love the, the background designs and details. Uh, that's a really great, interesting drawing. That'd be a, I'd love to own that original. That'd be awesome. Um, I think that's the end of it. This is talking about like a little short movie he directed a billion years ago. Um, and then this was, uh, I was talking about, there's a, uh, Strike Force, superhero, Superheroes Return to Top Cow, um, where he did those designs earlier that I was talking about and um, done by a significantly less interesting artist. And this guy's actually grown into be pretty dang talented and successful. I think this was maybe his first work. And it's like he's trying to do an imitation of the Top Cow comics, Mark Silvestri style. It just doesn't work for me. It's close, but like just a poor imitation. And it's just not that good. Uh, I do like the way this lightning bolt is done. And this organic background, these trees and forest stuff, I think that all looks really good. But it's just not as good to me. I, I don't like it. It's The black and white version is better than the colored version because as an artist, I like to see the black and white work and it looks pretty good in that respect, but he's no Mark Silvestri. That's unfortunate. But again, like I said, he got really good really fast. So anyway, that's all that is. Just a quick look. Some interesting things in there, kind of a thing that's came and gone. And um, I somehow ended up with two copies of this. I might have actually borrowed one, borrowed one from my brother and I might need to give it back to him. But that's all. A fun little sketchbook. Um, I want to do more sketchbook uh, looks at the uh, artists work like that in a sketchbook their raw form that's always interesting but i guess that's all i've got for now thanks for watching see you on the next one